Well, welcome. We're going to take a couple minutes and introduce you to something really fun and exciting called Tinkercad. So give me a moment and we will share our screen and you'll be able to see something hopefully fun for you to learn. Let's see if this works. Share. All right, hopefully you can see this share screen and uh, tinkercad.com. All right, let's go ahead and click on here. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to type in uh, your URL, tinkercad.com. You're gonna click join now in the upper left hand, upper right hand corner and follow the next slide. There you will create a personal account if you have not already started one. Um, and let's go ahead, click that button and watch what happens next. What you're going to do is you have a choice. You can sign up with Google, you can sign in with Apple. Um, I'm going to show this one option of signing with an email. So let's see how we go about doing that. In signing up with email, you want to make sure if you're under 18, you do have your parental consent. Uh, if you are over 18, then it's not an issue. Um, I've created a fictitious date. Uh, so somebody here is 25 years old. Let's take a look and see what happens after we enter a date of birth that is above 18 years old. And voila, it allows you an opportunity to type in your email address and a suitable password. You click the agree button checkbox to make sure that uh, you abide by all of their terms of service. And the little blue check mark in the um, box here shows that yes, you've entered a valid um, email address. I am a sample 9876 at gmail.com is one of my aliases and uh, is a valid email address. And I will then click uh, create account. And when I do so, oop, tells you wonderfully, yes, your account has been created. And all you have to do now is just hit the done button to get started. You will see next uh, a welcome exercise. A note in the welcome exercise, it'll say welcome and in whatever name you've used in your email, uh, it will pop that in as your uh, alias. So since my email address had I'm a sample 9878-9876, that welcomed me using that name. Uh, and you can play with these welcome exercises. They're, they're, they're very good. Uh, there are, happens to be uh, step by step number tabs at the top, some instructions that tell you what you're going to be doing. And if you follow those, you can start manipulating objects. The screen is very, very informative, lots of fun things for you to be able to incorporate. I'll demonstrate this in a little bit. And uh, this goes to show a couple of very good Tinkercad basic skill tutorials. Moving things around is one type of skill. The camera skills, camera controls, means how you're going to be viewing these objects from the left, from the right. And again, I'll demonstrate these in just a moment. The other lessons that are helpful for you, if you go to click the little learn button on the upper right hand side, click learn and you'll learn, you'll see this page, learn how to tinker. You can see several different tutorials here, how to place things, how to view things, how to move things, how to rotate. I will demonstrate all of these in a moment, but it's good for you to practice on some of these uh, to get familiarized with uh, the process. And um, yes, some of the uh, items that I've created over a period of time with uh, my students. And uh, we'll begin with um, creating a few things. So let me go ahead and change my share screen. And find, take off the PowerPoint escape and get on to Tinkercad. And let's go to here. And do this. All right, welcome back. So uh, on my page in Tinkercad, I have quite a few designs, as you can see. 
uh, different things have been created, lots of fun, interesting objects I've used in my geometry classes, my physics classes. And uh, what we're going to work on in this demonstration is to create a simple Christmas ornament. Uh, this first exercise will be quite simple. Uh, it'll get you started with uh, uh, your own design and bring that design in on the, our next class meeting. Hand the STL file to uh, uh, Mr. Nabil, and let's see if we can get something printed for you. So here is a button called Create New Designs. I'm going to create a new design click. And the palette that we're going to be presented with is a tabletop and a camera control button here and in a variety of different shapes. I have basic shapes, and the basic shapes would include cubes, cylinders, spheres, uh, triangles, wedges, prisms, uh, toruses, donuts, if you will, tubes, uh, hard stars, fun, fun shapes. In addition to basic shapes, there are also text and numbers. So I can bring in text and numbers, A through Z, as well as my numbers. Uh, numbers are on a separate tab right here. And that would be your zero through nine right there, exclamation mark, question mark, ampersand. Uh, very, very nice. Then you also have characters you can bring in and connectors and other fun things. So we're going to focus our attention on basic shapes and I'll show you how simply uh, it is to do something. I'm going to select a cylinder and the cylinder I'm going to grab and pull over. So what I did was I put my mouse on here, click and grab and put it over in the center of my workspace. Now, if I want to get a better view of this, I roll, scroll my scroll wheel forward and I can magnify. I can scroll my scroll wheel back to go away from the object. And by scrolling towards the object, I can touch on the sizing handle. If I touch on this sizing handle or touch on this sizing handle, what it is that I'm able to see are basic measurements. What is you're looking at is I've got 20 millimeters of depth, 20 millimeters of width. And there's one more sizing handle, the square one right at the top. This one tells me this object is 20, 20 millimeters tall. So 20 millimeters tall, 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. That's our starting point. If I right click and move my mouse, I can rotate my view. I can rotate this way. I can rotate this way. And what I'm doing is I'm holding the right mouse button and moving my mouse and watching the object move. And so I can move it from uh, the original perspective to this angle and then scroll my mouse forward and get a enlarged view. So I'm gonna stay with 20 by 20 millimeters, but I don't want the height to be 20. So I'm gonna come up to this square right up here and click and drag it down until my numeric display goes down to four. We're gonna size this down to four millimeters tall. And as this is four millimeters tall, I can now right click and I can see it's a flat disc shaped object right now. Kind of fun, easy. And what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna bring in another object and let's go here, bring in a tube. So here's a tube. I'm gonna bring in a tube. And the tube is rather large presently and I'm going to size it down. Uh, let's say we want this to be six by six, five by five, something. Uh, if I choose seven, that's okay. If I double click in here and I enter a seven, and hit enter, then I can also select dimensions to make um, this a certain height, a certain width. I don't have to, to um, grab a mouse and try to approximate a number. So for example, if I was here and I wanted both of these to be seven, seven, and I got tired of just dinking with my mouse, moving it around, trying to hit the combination of seven, seven, no big deal. I can select this, type seven, enter, and select this, type seven, enter, and boom, I'm done. Uh, this particular guy, in terms of height, I do want this to be, I'm gonna start with it nice and tall because I wanna place this guy right here and let's see how this guy places. And 
let's see from this view, that's a good hoop. That's going to be the uh, eyelet to which we're going to mount our um, Christmas tree uh, hook. So that's a good placement of that particular cylinder. Now that I've got it placed in, I've got ample amount of space. Let me show this to you. I've got ample amount of space in here to run my hoop through. You can see clearly it's way too tall for the final finish. That's okay. All I have to do is select this guy and click four. And now it's the same height as my disc. Now, back up from here and view from this angle. And what it is we can see is two objects that have been fused. Oh, they're not quite fused yet. If I, if I click up here and select both objects, I come up to this tool here and I can group. Once I hit group, they are truly fused together. And that's all there is to create a disc that can be um, a Christmas ornament. But I think we need to work on this a little bit more. So let's add some other enhancements to here that are easy and kind of fun to do. Let's go ahead and do this. Oh, by the way, um, you can select this. And if you really don't like this particular color, it's OK. We, we're going to use a special filament um, at school. And for now, it doesn't matter the color of this object. You can make this any color you want. But the, the filament that we're going to use will be a um, translucent orange yellow it's almost it almost glows so it'll be a fun material to use but for your particular drawing it can be any color that you want I've just changed it to several colors and I'm going to make it blue leave it blue now I'm going to come over here and text and I'm going to put in a text character in here let's go ahead and select J for example I'm going to bring a J over and the J object let's see uh, it is presently four. I'm going to make this a little taller, make this seven. And the reason I want to make this a little taller is because I want to see how this is going to be implanted into this disc. So if I move the letter J, that's seven millimeters tall, and you can see, wow, look at that. There it is. I can leave it raised, which is fine. Uh, and, and if I leave it raised and I fuse the two together, I will have a disc with a letter J that is elevated. For this exercise, because we want to keep the, uh, the use of filament um, efficient, let's go ahead and create something a little different. I have, I'm going to select the, the J object. Yes, and I'm going to hit the whole option. And when I hit the whole option, it looks like it created a vacuum. Uh, vacuum space. And if I go to view this from an angle, you can see the shadow of the, the J, almost like a ghost. Now watch what happens when I go to select this and then I group. When I group, that hole will truly become a hole. Isn't that fun? And you can see it from the underside. You can see it from here. You can see it from here. Isn't that fun? So now I've got a letter J in here now. And I'm going to do something also a little different. Let's kind of bring in uh, back to basic shapes. I saw something here that I thought was kind of fun. I'm going to bring in a star element. And wow, that's a big star. A little too big for what I want to use it for. So let me bring, grab this object and let's make this something like here. Place the star. And let's see how tall this is. Right click and rotate. Oh yeah, that's nice and tall. Perfect. Watch what happens when I take this object and I move it in here. See, it kind of melts into the first object, like so. And I don't want it to stick up this tall. Again, I want it to something like this. Now, let me take a look at it from here. OK, this is good. Oh, I see a little bit of the point. I see a little bit of the point of the star sticking out into this space here. And I don't want that. So I'm going to select the star. 
And you see the, this little arrow allows me to select and rotate so I can move the point of the star and bury it into the disc of my ornament. And yeah, I think that that's gonna work out pretty nicely. So I have a little bit of a star here. Uh, I'm gonna reduce the height just a tiny bit like that. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, all right. So we have something very simple. Oh yeah, we've gotta group these together. So I'm gonna hit group, boom. And now that's one color, one solid object. And that's the finish of our first project, is for you to create a disk with an initial in it and make a little hoop for your uh, um, ornament hoop hook and put some kind of a little design in here. And what we need to do now, uh, Tinkercad automatically saves your files. But what we need to do now is to use the export button. And right up here is the export button, upper right-hand side. I'm gonna click export. And we wanna select STL. So STL is the format that our laser, that our 3D printers utilize in order to create uh, and fabricate your design. So I'm gonna click STL and STL. And interestingly, it named it some object. It named it exquisite Lilo.STL. They uh, take your kid, does some very interesting things and create some fun names. But where did this export to? It exported to your downloads file. So we can minimize this for just a touch. And as I minimize this uh, and squeeze this guy down, I want to stop the share for just a moment and then go to the screen right here and then let you see in your downloads file. Let me go ahead and share this. Share right here. Sure. And so in your downloads, when you click downloads, look at that. Exquisite Lilo.stl was the name that Tinkercad had given to this file. When you send your file to Nabil, uh, you want to rename this guy because he doesn't know who exquisite Lilo.stl belongs to. So I'm going to put this down as a rename, Pima sample.stl. That way he knows that this file is from me, Ima sample, and hit enter. And then all I have to do is to send this in through Discord. And when you upload it into Discord before Monday, uh, during the course of Monday, what we'll do is we will print your design. Uh, just keep in mind that you want to keep the parameters of your design um, in a size that's no larger than 20 by 20 uh, millimeters and no taller than uh, four millimeters tall uh, with, with some minor enhancements that might be higher than or taller than four millimeters. You will save uh, the, the, the files automatically saved. Uh, you will export the file. The export will go into your downloads folder. You will find that file name, rename it, and send that STL, as I've just done, to uh, discord.com. Uh, our, our class Discord, I'll make sure Mr. Nubioli is uh, registered on there so he can acquire your STL file and uh, put it on the print. And you will see the, uh, the fruits of your labors uh, come uh, Monday evening, we hope, if everything goes well. So have fun with, um, let me go ahead and stop this share. So have fun with uh, Tinkercad. And if questions arise during the process as you play with this over the weekend, just hit me with Discord, okay? So with that, thank you very, very much and have a great weekend. Adios.